The Nasdaq outage last month brought back bad memories of Knight Capital's collapse last year. Here to talk about the trouble with trading and technology is Edgar Perez. He's the author of this brand new book, Nightmare on Wall Street. Welcome, Edgar. Thank you very much. All right, when you heard about the NASDAQ outage, did you immediately think about Knight Capital? Immediately, especially after it was only a couple of days after Goldman's trading Goldman function. So you had the flash crash, you have Knight Capital, you had Goldman, you have Everbrice Securities in China, and now you have NASDAQ. So really, we have to look not only at these incidents, but the big picture. And the fact that the SEC is inviting the exchanges to come to Washington for a meeting to specifically talk about the SIP, the information data, means to me that they are probably missing the big picture, which is something that eventually they will need to focus on. All right, let's talk about the little picture. Let's talk about your book for a second. Now, Tom Joyce, who was the CEO of Knight Capital at the time, he famously criticized the NASDAQ for its handling of the Facebook IPO, and then his firm was, uh, it was forced to be saved by Getco. They lost $440 million. So was this just a sad irony for Tom Joyce? It was a really sad irony. He wasn't even at the firm the day this happened. He was, you know, recovering from this surgery the day before, so he was not even planning on coming to the office. He had to come. There was no way around that. And definitely he had to fight for his life for six days until the company was, as you said, saved by a consortium of six firms. All right. Now, GetGo really is the, the main firm that is uh, saved or purchased Knight's assets. They sold off their bond business not too long ago to Stiefel, I think. What's the state of KCG as it trades mm -hmm. on the exchange right now? Well, KCG is now the merge of Knight Capital and GetGo. Obviously, the business for market making is not the best. 2008, 2009, those were the best years. Now, it's still difficult for them. So, the, ideally, now the merge is going to serve for them to consolidate the operations and eventually to look for new markets abroad and also to go into new asset classes. So, that's the goal now of the combined company. All right, now let's talk back about the big picture. What's the problem with technology on Wall Street? You can focus right now on the market makers. You know, BATS had a problem. You had this SIP problem not too long ago. Mm -hmm. Why can't these exchanges talk to each other? I think from my experience looking not only at I capital but at the industry in general, technology is an investment and it costs money. And of course, if it's going to be your competitive advantage, you have to put money into that not only to develop technology but also to make sure that technology works, even in worst case scenarios. And that's something that companies are not putting enough money in testing. Because the errors we found at night, we found a call, the flash crash, that's something that could have been tested before in the past, and that's something that wasn't done. So therefore, we have to look at the technology, we have to look at the implications of the interoperability of the systems between dozens of participants in the market. And when you say we, does that mean regulators have to work in conjunction with the firms to make sure everyone is on the same page? Market participants, trading firms, broker dealers, exchanges, regulators, there has to be a process there that everybody is agreeing that the markets and the systems are working, that there is going to be some penalties if the systems are not working. If I'm going to the street driving a car and I don't have insurance, I'm going to get a penalty. If a trading firm is going in trading and they don't have a system that is working, they also have that sort of penalty. And finally, how scared should individual investors be about the system? We keep hearing that a lot of investors, they don't want to come back because they got scared off by the flash ca crash. They got scared off by night capital. They got scared off by the NASDAQ outage. Should they be reassured that things are generally pretty safe? In general, things are safe. We have these incidents that, of course, don't help confidence of the markets. But if I'm a long-term investor, really, I'm not looking at what's happening in milliseconds or microseconds. I'm looking for the long term. So as long as my investments are going to be safe in the long term, investors will be fine. That being said, we still aspire to be the most financially sophisticated market in the world. And these mistakes shouldn't happen. Thank you very much. And thank you for watching The Street.